Hey students, welcome back. This is step two of the platform game assignment. And as you can see, I've added a few things here. This is the finished game. This is what your game should look like by the time you finish this step. Uh, we still see we have platforms and I changed those platforms a little bit. I'll talk about that uh, in a moment. You also see I added coins and when you uh, touch a coin, you get a point. When you get to the far right again, you go to the next level. Again, another uh, blue platform here. Uh, these I call the bounce pads. Um, when you uh, touch the blue uh, rectangle here, it gives you a whole bunch of bounce. And you saw there was one of those in the first level as well. And I just uh, touched the second coin. This one was worth five points. Now I've got a total of six points. And uh, I've finished that level. Again, there's the lava pit here in the middle. And if I go in that, the game is over and the points go back to zero. All right, let's see how we can add these features to our game. One of the things I noticed about the game when I play it at this point is sometimes when it's touching the side of a platform, the player either goes up or down unexpectedly. To solve this problem, I decided to edit the backdrops. Select your stage and go to the backdrops. What we need to do is edit the platform so that instead of having a black uh, outline around the entire uh, the entire platform. It'd be best if we turned off that outline like this and instead created a rectangle that has a black fill. Again, all the settings should be zero. And then with that rectangle selected, go ahead and draw just a black rectangle right at the top of the platform. You're going to want to do that with every one of your platforms. Here I show you how I'm editing the platforms, removing the black outlines, and replacing it with a black rectangle at the top. This should improve the movement of our player. Now that I've edited both of the backdrops, they should look something like this. You can see each of the platforms simply, ha simply has a black rectangle at the top. Next, we're going to make the bounce pad. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the rectangle tool change it to a dark blue color and create the bounce pad right here at the top of this first platform. Covers up most of the black area and go to level two and also here make a blue bounce pad. It's important you choose a color for this. It's not being used anywhere else in the game. You also might need to adjust the home position of your player now that you've added that black rectangle. Now that we have the blue bounce pad, we want to add code that will control the bouncing when the player hits the blue area. From the control panel, choose an if statement and add it here below the other if statements inside your main function of your player sprite. From the sensing palette, choose touching color. Use the eyedropper tool to select that dark blue color from the bounce platform. And from the variables palette, pull out three set blocks. For the first one, you're going to set the bounce force to 20. Normally, the bounce force was set to 10, so this is doubling that. Then set the Y speed to the bounce force value, and then set the bounce force back to 10. This causes the player to bounce twice as high and then slow down again. Now let's go ahead and test our game. Again, when we hit that bounce pad, my character starts to bounce really high. Perfect. Next, we're going to add our first collectible to the game. A collectible is an item that sits on the platform, and when the player touches that object, the player earns a point. We're going to add coins. So from the sprite window, I'm going to paint a new sprite. I'm going to choose the circle, choose a yellow color, and draw a perfect circle. If you hold down the shift key, it will create a perfect circle. You don't want it to be too big. With your selection tool, select that object and make sure again it's right in the center of the sprite editing window. I'm going to give it a black stroke that is about 8 pixels wide. I'm going to take the text tool, make sure the fill for the text tool is set to black, click there in the middle, and add the number 1. To make that text bigger, choose the selection tool and just drag the corner making the text a little bit bigger. This coin is worth one point. Let's duplicate this costume. And in the second costume, 
simply change the number from 1 to 5. Let's go back to the code view and start coding the coins. To begin coding the coins, we will pull out from the event palette a one green flag clicked, go to looks, and hide the sprite. All the code is going to be attached to clones of the coin. So from the control palette, pull out a when I start as a clone. In there, let's put a forever loop and then an if else statement. We're going to set the position and value of the coin based on which level of the game we're currently in. So we're going to ask the question, if the backdrop number of the stage is equal to 1, then set the coin at a certain position. Here's how we do that. Pull out the equal operator from the sensing palette. Pull out the backdrop number of stage. And if it's equal to 1, we're going to set the location of the coin. But to do that, we're going to actually define a my block. Go to the my blocks click on make a block, and call it set location. This is going to set the location of the coin. But for this particular my block, we're actually going to add an input. So right here, click on add an input, and let's call it level. Say OK. From the control block, pull out an if else statement and an equals operator. Now what you can do when you have an input here is you can actually drag this value called level from here and drag it right into the left side of the equal statement. So if the level equals 1, then first we'll show the coin, switch the costume to costume 1, which has the 1 on it, and set it at a particular location. But we might not know what that location is, so let's take the coin and place it here at the top of this platform. I also think we need to make the coin a little smaller, so let's set it to 70%. Now once I've placed the coin in the correct position, I can look down here and see what that X and Y value is. It's 28 and 88 in my game. So let's go to Motion, pull out a Go to XY, and again, set it to 28 and 88. Use whatever numbers work best for the position of your coin. In order to use the Set Location function that we just created, we need to call it. So let's go to My Blocks, pull out the Set Location, and place it here inside the If statement and put a 1 inside the input area. In the else clause, let's pull out another if else, asking a similar question as we did here. Let's right click on this and duplicate this equal sign block, place it in the if clause here, ask if the backdrop number of the stage is a 2, and if so, we'll pull out another set location, place it in the if clause, and put the number 2 here. From the control panel, let's pull out another if else, right click and duplicate this condition, and set the number to 2. We can copy these three as well, place them in the if clause. Now we're going to set, we want to make sure it's set to costume 1 in the first if statement, costume 2 in the second, and we're going to have to adjust the numbers here for the x and y location. We'll do that once we test it. Before we go any further, let's give this sprite a proper name. Let's make sure it's called coin. And in order to test it, we need to make sure we create clones of the coin. So let's go back to the player. From the control palette, choose create clone of. Place it right here above the home block inside the main function. Make sure you're making a clone of the coin. And there's two places where we're going to make a clone. We're going to do it here when we first click the green flag, but also when we get to the far right of the screen. So let's create a clone of a coin. When the position of the player is beyond 235 to the right. Now let's test the game. We see when I hit the green flag, a coin has been created here. I'm in level one, and so a coin with a number one is revealed. When I leave the screen to the far right, I go into level 2, and the coin now appears with a 5 on it. Perfect. Now back in the editor, I can adjust the numbers. I need to go a little further to the right and a little higher up. So go ahead and adjust those numbers till you get your coin in the right position. Next, we need to program the coin so that when the player touches it, you get a point. Make sure you're inside the coin sprite. 
pull out an if statement and place it right underneath set location one. From the sensing palette, pull out a touching mouse pointer, change mouse pointer to player. So if the coin is touching the player, we want to change points by one. Make sure you have a points variable. If you haven't already created that, do so now. Let's change points by one. And the next thing we need to do from the control palette is pull out a delete this clone. This will cause the coin that was just touched by the player to disappear. Let's right click on that if statement and duplicate it and pull that if statement down and place it underneath set location two. And if we're in level two, we want to change points by five and that should do it. Let's test our game. Again, we come up and if we touch that first uh, coin, we get one point. We move over to the far right, go to level two. And if we touch that second coin, we get another five points, making for a total of six. I still need to change the location of that second coin. It's not quite right. You want it to be sitting up here on the top of this platform. But so far, so good. One thing you may have noticed is that the else clauses here in the coin sprite are, are both empty. That's for you to add additional code when you start to add additional levels to your game. I'm going to leave that blank for now. Part of your challenge is going to be to add extra levels to the game. There's one more feature that needs to be added to the code, and that is here in level two, we have the lava pit. And if the player falls into that area that's colored red, the game should end, points should be set back to zero, and the player should be set back to his home position. Let's code that now. Inside the main when green flag clicked function inside the player sprite, go down to the bottom, pull out another if statement, place it here at the very bottom, still inside the forever loop, right click on the touching color and duplicate it, pull that in here, click in the color area, choose the eyedropper, come out and choose that red on the screen. And when the player is touching the red color, we want the game to be over. So let's define another my block. Make a block, call it game over. It doesn't require any inputs. Just click OK. To define game over, we're going to have three things happen. The player will go back to his home position. We'll set points to zero, and in the looks palette, let's switch the backdrop back to the first level, level one. Now remember, when we define a function like this, the game over function, we have to call it in order for it to work. So go back to my blocks, find the new game over block, pull it here and place it inside this if statement we just created. Now we're ready to test our game. Click the green flag. I'm gonna try and go directly to level two and fall into the lava pit. And when I do, points is set to zero, and I'm placed back in level one at my home position. So there you go. Now you know how to create a basic platform game. In this video, I've shown you how to make your sprites, how to cause your player to move and jump, how to apply gravity, how to keep your player from falling when they're on a platform, how to add collectibles like coins, and how to code obstacles like the lava pit. Your challenge is to add more levels, add more collectibles, things like the coin, and to add more obstacles like the lava pit. Be creative and make this the best game you can. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If so, give it a like. I'll see you in the next video.